Hey guys, I'm Zoe and I'm a third year medical student bringing to you this video on laryngeal cancer. If you haven't seen my first two videos on the basic anatomy of the larynx, I recommend that you catch up on those first. In this video I want to take you on a journey through a patient with laryngeal cancer with a particular emphasis on the anatomy and physiology for this video. This video is aimed at medical student level. Laryngeal cancer is a cancer that arises in the larynx of the throat and is the second most common head and neck cancer in the UK. It is heavily linked to smoking and alcohol. It commonly presents with symptoms such as hoarseness, pain, change in voice or dysphagia. Any smoker that visits their GP with hoarseness gets an urgent referral to ENT, meaning they'll be seen within one to two weeks. During the appointment, it is vital to get a risk factor history, smoking, excessive voice use, recreationally or professionally, inhaled steroid use, and reflux are all important to check. Along with an oral and lymph node check, the patient requires a nasopharyngoscopy, like the one shown here. This is actually my own healthy larynx, and as you can see, this is a great tool for visualising the larynx quickly and easily. If a lesion is seen, the patient will undergo a microlaryngoscopy under general anaesthetic to allow a small biopsy to be taken. The biopsy will be assessed for characteristic changes of laryngeal cancer. 95% of laryngeal cancers are squamous cell, and squamous cell is a cell type that covers the vocal and vestibular folds. Above and below these, the larynx is lined by ciliated respiratory epithelium. These two pictures show H and E stained slides. The left image is a vocal cord biopsy. At the top right of the picture, you can see normal stratified squamous epithelium, and further left, you can see islands of atypical cancer cells invading the underlying connective tissues. The right image is a higher magnification of an SCC, showing nuclear atypia and several abnormal mitotic figures. Not all laryngeal cancers are squamous, and rarely cancers like adenocarcinomas or spindle cell carcinomas can be found. The site of the cancer is important for prognosis. The vast majority of the cancers arise from the glottis. The glottis is made up of the true vocal cords and anterior and posterior commissures. The cancers can also rarely be in the supraglottis, the area above the glottis, and even more rarely in the subglottis. Tumours on the vocal cords can spread to the thyroarethnoid muscle early, which sits in Reinke's space. Reinke's space is located below the vocal cord and allows vibration, readily assisting phonation. When cancer invades, this causes problems with the mobility of the vocal cord. Laryngeal cancers are staged using the TNM system, tumor nodes metastasis. If the patient presents with stage two or over, they will receive a neck and chest CT to look for a second primary, such as lung, that can be common in heavy smokers. Metastases from laryngeal cancers are rare, however patients will often be lymph node positive, i.e. the cancer has been found to have spread to the surrounding lymph nodes. A very quick word on treatment. Early T1 to 3 cancers are treated with radiotherapy and have an amazing 5 year survival of 90 to 95%. T4 and metastasized cancers require a laryngectomy and possibly a neck dissection. I hope you found your quick tour around laryngeal cancer useful. If you'd like to test your knowledge and what you've learned today, please feel free to complete the formative test to see what you know. Thanks for watching.